Hello and welcome to week 10 lectures. This week we'll extend our models from last week. So last week we looked at Poisson regression. And this week we'll look at the issues we get with Poisson regression and how to fix some of those issues. So the model we'll look at this week is the negative binomial regression. The first part of this is a little mathematical where we describe the models and the probability distribution that go with it. But the second part is applied and again you can ignore a lot of the maths if you wish, but it's interesting for those who might know a bit more maths. This, most of the stuff here uh, is found, at least the mathematical aspect is found in Agresti's book, but you'll find also some of this in the sleuth as well. So the Poisson probability model we know is a model for count data. Y is Poisson lambda, where lambda here is a mean rate of occurrence, and lambda is bigger than zero. Y takes any non-negative integer values, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And the probability mass function of Y is given by this expression, e to the negative lambda, where lambda is the mean, lambda to the Y over Y factorial here for the values Y equals 0, 1, 2, and so on. The mean here for the Poisson is equal to lambda, and the variance also is equal to lambda. So we know the mean and variance of the Poisson distribution are equal. Now, what usually happens in many cases is that the mean and variance aren't equal. Either the variance is too large compared to the mean or too small compared to the mean. In that case, we either have when the variance is less than the mean, an underdispersed model, and where the variance is greater than the mean, we have an overdispersed model. So dispersion essentially is the idea of the relative spread with respect to variance. So we require a model here that is a bit more dispersed than the, than the Poisson in this case because otherwise we know we won't have the right kind of model for the data and the model won't fit very well. So in this case, if the variance is increasing faster than the mean, then it's over dispersed and you'll find that the residuals will misbehave themselves, especially the piece of residuals. And if the model shows you that the mean is larger than the variance, or the variance is larger than the is, is less than the mean. Sorry, then you'll find the model is under dispersed, and you'll find again the piece of the studio is giving problems. Next week or later, in fact, this week in the lectures, we'll take a look at in week ten. That is, we'll take a look at some ideas of how we can decide whether it's over dispersed or under, under, under dispersed. So, as it says here for the moment. If the residuals versus the predictors appear to fan out, then we have this idea of uh, over uh, dispersion in this case. Now, a simple scale factor kind of adjustment might be appropriate. We know that we can transform data, but in this case, you want to transform the Poisson counts because the, the model is already a log model. So, the negative binomial distribution, or also called the Poisson gamma mixture model sometimes, is also based on count data. So where what we have here with this uh, idea of the negative binomial is that the parameter lambda itself is now going to have a distribution. So the lambda is considered here when a variable with a gamma distribution. Now you haven't probably seen the gamma distribution before, but we'll take a look at some problem, some of the ideas of the gamma distribution here. The, prob the, prob the probability of y equals small y given lambda here is Poisson lambda, where lambda is a gamma distribution. And the gamma distribution is given by this probability function here, or the density function. The beta is a parameter for this, and so is the alpha. So it's beta to the alpha here. This is a gamma function, gamma to the alpha. And the same power is lambda to the alpha minus 1, and e to the negative beta lambda for lambda bigger than 0. And of course, if lambda is not bigger than 0, there's nothing to talk about here. And uh, in fact, uh, the mean value here for lambda is alpha of 1 beta, and the variance here is alpha of 1 beta squared. And the gamma function is sometimes considered as a generalized factorial function, because for a positive integer n, gamma of n is n minus 1 factorial. And the gamma function for a value z, where z can be any real or complex number, is given by the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the z minus 1 and e to the negative z. This is a complex integral, 
and if you well some most of you probably haven't done complex function analysis before but uh, one or two in the class I, I know have so this kind of thing will make sense to you but we don't need all the details I'm giving some ideas of the maths behind this the idea we, we require here the complex number with a positive real part not a negative real part so if I've got y is an observation from a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda and lambda is also a random variable from a gamma distribution then the joint distribution here of uh, well, distribution of just y here is essentially the joint distribution of y and lambda so it's the probabilities for the y part come from the Poisson distribution and the probabilities for the lambda part come from the gamma distribution and this again for lambda will be given zero and here y because this Poisson will be a count if then I want the distribution just of y then I have to integrate out the lambda part here and again, those who have done might maybe more probability to understand how this actually works. We don't have to work out how this works, but in the end it comes out as the distribution of y here, the marginal distribution of y, looks out to be, this is a combination idea, the same as what we found in the binary distribution, you know, things like 4 choose 2 idea, and then we put beta over beta plus 1 to the alpha, and 1 over beta plus 1 to the y here, where y is the Poisson count. So the negative binary distribution actually is a mixture of two distributions, Poisson gamma distribution here, and the probabilities or pro pro properties here are similar to the Poisson distribution. If y has a negative binary distribution, then the mean is alpha upon beta, and the variance is the same, but there's an inflation factor here, or when it increases the variance a little bit. So you can see we can actually have a variance here that's larger than the mean. Now, if alpha is equal to beta upon beta times lambda, here if we set that to be the case, alpha is beta times lambda, and then beta goes towards infinity, the negative binomial will become more and clo more closer to the Poisson distribution, because as beta increases, this the beta squared here becomes a lot bigger, faster than the beta does, and this term here becomes zero very much faster. We essentially end up here with the distribution we have before if so I put alpha is beta upon lambda you so the beta cancels off over here and uh, you will get essentially out of this the Poisson distribution now there are various ways of parameterizing this uh, negative binomial distribution I won't go through all the details over here but R expresses the negative dis uh, negative binomial distribution in terms of the parameters the negative binomial here in terms of the parameters mu as alpha when beta and theta which is equal to alpha so we get here the mean is equal to mu and the variance is mu plus mu squared upon theta and as theta goes to the infinity here you can see this part disappears and we come exactly to the same as the Poisson distribution and the negative binomial model here this is the variance inflation part here you can see this is where the over dispersion can be modeled now, you can see that negative binomial can actually accommodate over dispersion, but not under dispersion. So, in this parameterization, with the right things substituted in the right places, you get the probabilities for y here as a Poisson distribution given by that expression over here. And y it actually has a, a, a negative binomial distribution here as given with the parameters of mu and theta. So y here is we say the Poisson count but we're modeling the mod modeling it here is negative binomial. So the we can plot this we, we can plot the Poisson with different values as we saw earlier here and uh, this is the Poisson distribution you can see its shape for various values of uh, lambda and the negative binomial can also be plotted. We plot, plotted this here for mu equals three and you can see it has a very similar shape to that of the Poisson distribution and you can see that uh, as uh, the values of theta increase over here it becomes more and more symmetric and more and more closer to the normal distribution but in this case it becomes also much more like the Poisson distribution 
So that's all the maths part of this. Have a look at that if you wish. Some of this I think you should look at just to make sure you understand some ideas of how these things are modeled. In particular, it shouldn't be too hard to see that the model we're going to use here is the negative binomial model does have this structure which is great because the mean here is mu and the variance is mu with an extra term here which is what will allow for the over dispersion to be modeled. We'll take a look at an example in the next lecture. Thank you.